Well, we can definitely teach our old wolf uh, Trevor some new tricks because he said that air wax would probably be a little bit oh. unimpressive. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, and the Svenskern wouldn't really need his backpack, but it actually caught us all off guard, to be honest. I think that's very fair, and I think I deserve to take that one right <laughs> on the chin. I completely undersold Copenhagen Wolves. I completely overpraised SK, at least in this one game. It's mm -hmm. the opening game of the splits. I said that Airwax was going to be a weak link and whatnot, and he comes out and goes massive. He had a huge impact in the game. He was all over the place. He was in every single lane. The questions that we had for SK, how are they going to perform? What were they going to do? I mean, it wasn't a great showing, I think, from everybody. Svensky and Rand Lee Sin, you know, it's the champion that got him the backpack at Worlds and playoffs rather. And, and yeah. it just it didn't show up. So all praise to Copenhagen Wolves. And I'm sorry for selling a guy short. I mean, I guess what to summarize uh, a lot of points there, th I think. To, to put it into one kind of short thing, the old SK didn't work in the new European meta. In that game, in their first outing, I think that's fair to say. Uh, and one of the biggest things that contrasts this SK from the previous SK was what we showed at the beginning of the show. We showed the graphs to show uh, at 15 minutes what was the gold lead or gold deficit. In this one game from SK Gaming, they were down three and a half thousand gold. And when you compare that to the former SK for Spring Split, they were up on average a thousand gold. Yes, it's only one game, but if that is a sign of what's to come, it's an incredibly different lineup and an incredibly different feel. Yeah, definitely something to, to work on for them. And then on the side of the Copenhagen Wolves, uh, we were asking the question before, then Freeze, although he sets those low expectations, he must have a lot of trust in the entourage and, uh, and everything there. And it does seem, kind of when we say about H2K, they're going to refine the way they play. It does seem like the Copenhagen Wolves have pulled a card of, you know what, we're going to go and try and refine what we can do and try and do it better with Airwax now picking that Evelyn who has been gaining popularity and we've heard from Amazing Why with the Azir coming out for Soren, which is actually a perfect fit. So it's nice to see those adaptations. Yeah, there was a lot that worked for Copenhagen Wolves, certainly from the picks and bands. They even first picked Eve. I mean, not a lot of teams would even think of doing that, but obviously they wanted to hide the Draven for later. We know Freeze is Draven. That's been talked about all day. Copenhagen Wolves just looked very comfortable the entire game. And again, picks and bands, you touched on the lease in from Sven Skeren. Eve gets locked in first. Sven is their answer on Lee Sin to it. And he's 0, 0, 0 up until 16 and a half minutes. That is completely past Lee Sin's point at which you would normally pick him for. If you don't have that impact early game, if you can't control Eve in the early game, you're not going to be able to control her later on. I completely agree. One of the other things that really does stand out... Copenhagen Wolves, they're good pick and bans, good early game, good mid game, but the way they finish the game is better than they've done all year long. Yep. Copenhagen Wolves were notorious for dragging games out, giving opponents chances to get back in there because they simply had no idea how to knock down the Nexus. Mm -hmm. This time around, they get the Baron fight they want, they get the Baron, they push the, the, the base in and they, they cleaned house, really. And it was very impressive. It is one game, it is the opening match. You know, they've got their sea legs, SK do not. And we just need to see where do things shake up and how do they balance it out. Crepo said, quite honestly, you know, week three, week four is when we start having the actual power levels yeah. really yeah. standardizing and showing through. Yeah, but will be lessons to be drawn from that one for SK Gaming. Now, looking at the league overall, we're just one day into the summer split and Dexter is already making a splash in his return to the pro scene. Nine kills, no deaths, and 11 assists. He is our leader in the fantasy league today. Uh, our fantasy leader, rather, racking up over 37 points. We had him on the desk here as well. Uh, he was flying all over the map and he just felt in the zone and it definitely showed up. That the Baron team. Steel was so yeah. good. Yeah, right. I'm sad he's not on my fantasy team. <laughs> well, I mean, your fantasy team is the best fantasy team on PTL's, uh, you know, fantasy league. I can never <laughs> remember the full league name of it. I'm prime, sure time, prime time league, League of Legends, fantasy league. Okay. PTL because FL4. PTL FL4, you've got the best And team. the only reason Stress is saying that is because he drafted for me while I was on vacation. But I must admit, I'm stoked. You got me Hooney. I called my team the Hollow Rangers Argo. Uh, he got me like 20-odd points. Uh, Rainover got me 26. Yeah. Hyanen's on there as well. So I think I'm in a good spot. The only thing is, I'm fighting Mark Merrill. 
<laughs> so like I'm in I'm in this torn decision. Don't beat him. <laughs> do do I throw at the end and say employed, or do I beat him and run the risk? Yeah. But here's here's the thing though, is MSI, MSI, we already proved that EU over NA. So what we had to do was rather than send our LCS caster, we just put the challenger guys there yeah, yeah. and we'll still beat them. You we'll still beat them on I'm the gonna fantasy. stop you right there. You're getting into dangerous waters, the young Padawan. <laughs> There's still time to form a League of Legends a league of your own, by the way. So get your draft on for a 2015 summer split if you haven't already head over to fantasy.lolesports.com for more information and to uh, select your perfect team now throughout the day you folks at home were calling out all the action some big plays but we selected this one from at call me maybe right reckless may be back on fanatic but this is still the hoonie show his nar alts are insane here is your lcs big play of the day We'll see whether or not that Maokai is enough frontline. Now Featherfin's joined the fight. Hillisang, I think, flash forward for that one. Oh. Eastern QSF for Reckless. But the massive Gnar against the wall. Fnatic have just won the team fight. Thanks to Huni. Four members of Unicorns of Love are down. Yeah, the, the Huni pot is still very sweet if you're a Fnatic <laughs> fan. And the thing is, oh. it's so great to see the growth because uh, Huni on Gnar in the spring split was average at best. He didn't hit a single wall when he used Gnar. Uh, MSI was a marked improvement, and that game was just phenomenal. Absolutely, and Fnatic just looking uh, more scary than they already have, which was something that was hard to imagine at the end of last split, but it is happening. And with day one of the summer split behind us, let's take a look at how the teams stack up as set. Standing tall with one win apiece are the Copenhagen Wolves, Elements, Fnatic, H2K, and Origen, and everyone else is a game back at ON1. Um, a lot of things we had expected, I would say, Fnatic, H2K in this uh, one, even Orihan after day one, getting that win versus Giants. But the Copenhagen Wolves at the top of the table and the rest at the bottom. And Elements at the top, which is good for the fans and actually a very good showing for them, a good lick to stand on. Anything else in the standings that uh, particularly caught you off guard? I think I don't want to take the wind out of anybody's sails, any team sails, but uh, week one of Spring Split, we had some teams that picked up wins and they ended up bottom half of the table. It's so still all to play for for now. So lots of strong performances, but let's not start uh, cashing I in think the world's that's trips yet. Giants, Giants went 2-0 and, and then yeah. obviously really stumbled once their magic ingredients were removed. But I think you hit the nail on the head, Sharks. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves beating SK in the manner they did. Right. That, to me, is, is one of the loudest statements that we've seen all day. Yep. And they are at the top of the tables, at least for now. And uh, those standings are bound to change tomorrow as the week continues with a clash between Origen and H2K. Then we'll have the summer split first. El Clasico as Fnatic takes on SK Gaming. And we'll wrap up the week with Elements versus the Unicorns of Love. Ah, Elements versus the Unicorns of Love. Fantastic. And El Clasico, which, well, sadly, now, or actually, SK Gaming really will have something to prove and really show if they want to show up up in the first two days of LCS that they can show something. Yeah, SK are going to have to bring it. They are <laughs> going to have to bring the absolute best game they've got to take on this Fnatic squad. That is going to be a great game. I'm actually really looking forward to the H2K Origin game as well uh, because that's last season's best challenger team against the team that just came from challenger and auto-qualified. So this, uh, that's an interesting game too. I can't pick one out. I want to see every single team. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt like there was a lot of pick and ban trends that happened throughout most of the games today and I'm interested to see if they continue. I also want to see where Rexai and Ash continue to yeah. play because I feel like those are two champions that are very contested that I wasn't actually expecting coming into the week. So... We'll see if that continues in day two. Yep, we'll see tomorrow indeed. And the games will start tomorrow, Friday, at 6 p.m. Central European time. That is 9 a.m. Pacific. Now, until then, we must bid farewell. On behalf of myself, Stress, Quickshot, and the rest of the LCS team, thank you so much for joining us for the start of the Summer Split. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Summer Split is about to start, and it's going to be a rematch between the two spring finalists. Hillisang, I think, flash forward for that one. Oh. But the massive gnar against the wall. Fnatic have just won the team fight, thanks to Huni. And the spring split champions open up summer with a massive victory. Origin were playing as they were almost in the LCS, so we're going to have to see now. It's still burning him away. Agony's embrace is melting giants on the side lane. It's a two for one as the Glacial Prison locks up Origin. Origin are on the board, taking down giants. I'm in the middle of all of them. Well, forgiven, 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 forgiven. Nice, 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 nice. nice, nice. nice. Go yes, to Piper, yes, go to Piper. Yes, we need a sip, we need a sip. He's the only one getting damaged. He's getting sip. Go to sip, go to sip. Go to sip. Good job. Nice. nice. Massive smiles from Elements as they pick up their first win in summer. Uh, 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 she's confident. Uh, 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 u
fall down. That's a double kill over to Woolite before he himself melts. Vander chased all the way back to his fountain as H2K completely clean house. And a fantastic match for H2K. They just take their time around it. They're starting to melt. Soren moves forward. Emperor is divided and throws down the Zanyas. He's face taking a whole ton of damage, but he stays alive. Double kill for Draven as he gets his stacks cashed in. A triple kill. And Copenhagen Wolves take down SK Gaming and thunder off to a 1-0 start in the summer split.